beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed um take time to study the operation of god in that area because god works in different ways through different platforms according to many factors his predetermined counsel for them their level of alignment to his will the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest are we together now when God calls a people, when God commissions a ministry, an assignment, there are usually certain graces. Please pay attention. Graces, anointings, and dimensions of the operation of the Spirit that is um, committed to those people. So those who come must be aware that I am coming to a ministry that through grace, and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit and that coming to that ministry can make it possible i was teaching the prayer department on tuesday during their prayer and i was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres are we together now when you come under the influence of their atmospheres within that period you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere are we together now so when you keep doing that over a long time there is a transference there is an impartation but you see if you don't realize what is obtainable bishop oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity that you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible so the Lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again, to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place. Please, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people. I know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation. They just love to see sinners saved. That's wonderful. But um, this is not one of those platforms, believe me. I want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the Spirit. This is not a minor contribution to what God is doing on earth. If you, if you see it that way, you will, you will not give your best. There's been a lot of prophecy about Zaria right from before some of us were born there's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season so we're not just stumbling into a move of god resident within the north no there is a mystery behind this move of god that is coming in this season and what god is doing 
and so i want us to understand that we are prophecy being played jesus in the book of luke chapter 4 the bible says reading from verse 16 downward that he took the book the 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 scroll where it was written about him where prophet isaiah wrote about him right and he began to read it the spirit of the lord is upon me and then when he read down he said this day in other words what you see is a manifestation of that when the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost peter told them this is that in other words look you are now seeing the manifestation of something i pray that one day as you study the bible you will see koinonia there that as you study you will suddenly connect and say god said this will happen we are seeing that this is not just a circumstance but this is prophecy hallelujah i need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared it's very very important there is nothing listen there is no major move of god that happens without being spoken about i used to see these days years ago in visions i never knew it would be this way glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this and i knew that it was you see these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace it's not about prayer and fasting it's not about just wishing no everyone who desires to press into god as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny however there is an election of grace are we together now god always has a move in every territory and every city and it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of god can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are saying please value it i want you to value it i want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of god you know how pastors say look we are going places and the members say i'll be there with you this is not one of those things it's not just that we are going places you will see how this move fits into prophecy it will happen i've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier dimension of this move but i was more than willing to participate i was desperate i i insisted that the move will not happen in my absence hallelujah so you must you must be very intentional brothers and sisters let me tell you if you are here seated in this place tonight is because there is prophecy upon your life believe that if there was no prophecy upon your life you would not be here i'm not motivating you i am telling you that among all these people there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with that's why god made sure that you have to be here in this season and it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place the fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it are we together yeah the principle of substitution is that which we see in this in, in scripture again and again that the mandate of a man not just his mantle his entire assignment can be given to another we read about saul in the bible right saul the son of kish a time came he was there seated on the throne but the entire mandate had been given to him terah the father of abraham the very assignment of abraham terah was to be the father of nations but he messed up because of lack of alignment and the mandate went to abraham 
when Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus Christ, God insisted that there had to be a replacement for him. You see that? So, brothers and sisters, please realize that for every one of us seated here, you are not seated here for your sake. You are seated for the sake of a generation. Listen for their sake. Listen for the sake of your children. Listen for the sake of those who are hungry for God but may never have access to come to these territories. Listen as a school. Pay attention as though you are being trained for something great. I've always given my life and the presence of God and the word of God utmost seriousness. You never see me distracted in the house of God and in the presence of God. You must please pay attention. This is not just a time of worship, a worship service. It's an impartation. There is something happening to you. There is growth. There is ascendance in the spirit. Four things I want you to always expect when you come here. Number one, this place is a place of encounter. Please never forget this. It's a place of encounter. It's the hallmark of this ministry. Encounters. Encounters with Jesus. Encounters with the spirit of the living God. Encounters with the word of God. And by word of God, I don't just mean what you are holding in your hand. The scripture that has been explained, that has the breath of the spirit upon it, capable of producing results in your life. Encounters. Whenever you come here, you must expect it. That something resonates from eternity to your spirit. You know that God is in this place. Through the worship, through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's, it's intentional I want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter. Visionary encounters, yes. But that the reality, an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you. It's called an encounter. When, when I touch this flower, for instance, my touching it gives me a feel, an emotional connection to it. That's what an encounter is. That by the agency of the Holy Spirit, something happens to you in this place that draws you near. That, that nearness of the presence of God is experienced. Number two. Whenever you come to this place, expect remarkable transformation. The lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day. In 24 hours, something must start fighting you. Are we together? No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this place, you can choose to argue, but it's like a virus. It has caught up with your spirit. Hallelujah. You can pretend eh, there's nothing usual about it, but I tell you, if you come for just one meeting and you never attend, you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again. It's, it's like a cancer. It's a, see, there are mysteries that support the things we do. It's not just happening. There is a revelation that sponsors this. Have you seen a man, you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him. Then when he goes back, he starts thinking about it and say, Kai, but this person cheated me. Oh. That's what happens here. So when the word of God comes upon your spirit, there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays. 
it sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of God. Hallelujah. Radical transformation. I trust that God will grant us grace that we will be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people, literally without exaggeration, of people that have been blessed just through these teachings. 70% of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person. There is a mystery to these teachings. The presence of God and its power to change people. I've gone for meetings and seen people talk and I thought I was hearing myself. And I looked at them and they said, Sir, you have never seen me but I have 200 of your messages. I have 250 of your messages. I have your message till last week. That's the power of transformation to change state right so when you come here there is a paradigm shift the messages are so designed not just to whet your appetite spiritually there are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more but there are not definite things you hold i teach especially in points because i want your mind to be able to hold on to something when you want to create a paradigm shift the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive we are replacing old philosophies we are replacing old ideas about god about life and this is happening by the power of the word hallelujah mental and intellectual alignment still part of radical transformation one of the things that the lord taught me as i have worked with the lord and i've incorporated it even in this ministry is balance everybody say balance i've said it again one of the things that i have um i have been disturbed about in the body of christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire but he will still die are we together now so you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach because it is important god will judge me if i mislead you i take advantage of your openness i must commend the loyalty of the people everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful less what you call light be dark you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever you can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of god and fail in another understanding that you understand god in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of him chances are that if i teach you on the anointing and the holy spirit you will think i'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage my perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean i know what i'm saying that's the reason why every man of god must be on a consistent passion a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of god is concerned so you don't mislead people i've heard ministers that i respect their perspectives in different areas but i've heard them communicate other areas and i am shocked to see their degree of ignorance it's like someone who imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing you can imagine that kind 
I have been obsessed about balance. One of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life, it will not be that I believe they lie. Hallelujah. And that I've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie. And they are running with that lie. And then I ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back. Brothers and sisters, this is why we pray for utterance. We don't pray because we are scared of preaching. We pray for alignment in the spirit. We pray that the things that are communicated, that even after 10 years, that even when there is need for upgrading, it doesn't become that that was a lie. And men of God here, those who are pastors, maybe inside, outside, I challenge you, do not take for granted never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach there are pastors now i'm not against people but there are pastors who sit down cross their leg watch football you know eat and do everything and say ah it's time and they just come and say look where did we even stop last week no don't play with people like that take them seriously the church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in africa it's more powerful than banks it's more powerful than schools you're only in the university or any institution of learning for three four or five years or six years and then you are done but every sunday every wednesday every friday every thursday and some churches every day you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you i will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor and at any time I find out that what I've communicated is not accurate, I do not have any embarrassment to come back and say, look, let's realign. We have seen something clear. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? Expect transformation. You can measure transformation. Your degree of change. Your thinking. The way you analyze things, your comprehension of the workings of the spirit. This is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity. You cannot be uh, coming here week in, week out, whether indoors or outside, and then something is not changing about your life. You can't be doing the same things, saying the same things, having the same convictions. No, the word of God alters your convictions. Something about you must change something about you must change something about your prayer life must change something about your passion for the word something about your interpretation of the word something about the ideology of god you knew growing up must shift it must be altered are we together now something about the ministry of the holy spirit must change in your life if that is not happening you are not changing you are not changing. I detest stagnancy in my life like cancer. I detest it. I'm obsessed with progress. I like to see progress. That's why I hate stagnancy. Anyone who is close to me knows that. I'm constantly in a state of transition. Change. You can't be in the same level for a long time. Intellectually, physically. When we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations, part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy. There are some of us, there was one stone near your house from the time you were born. That stone is still there. Nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better? It's still there. As a monument that does not motivate anything only brings pain and regret you remember they flogged you near that stone 
you remember that's where they drove you out of the house nothing to inspire you the word of god should change you that at the end of every koinonia service you should just sit down like this and get up i like it when the word of god enters people and i study the reactions of people to the word not just oh preach preacher that's there's a place for that but that your spirit is is receiving something and you're saying look what am i doing is is god is giving me too much opportunity i'm wasting grace i'm making the word of god of non-effect let the word of god challenge me he said the spirit entered into me ezekiel 2 from verse 1 and 2 and set me upon my feet the spirit entered when he spake unto me he brought an idea that is superior to that which i have known and it compels change change with results immediately that you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately make certain vows and commitments enter into certain strong personal covenants with god on account of what you have heard the bible says meditate on these things he says give yourself wholly to them he says that you're profiting brothers and sisters ask god how much i pray for you i don't think i pray for you i pray for myself one tenth of the way i pray for you and my prayer is not god give them cars give them houses that's a stupid prayer the prayer is oh god let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery that's what will produce every other thing you know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery that you come into oneness with these mysteries you know them you are persuaded about their reality and they begin to produce remarkable results in your life financial prosperity spiritual growth is never a thing of joy to me i don't know about other preachers but i hate being the only one i know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy but i hate being the only one who can produce certain levels of results unlike many preachers it is my joy when I see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people, it gives me great joy. So it pains me when after a long time, our level of spiritual metamorphosis is slow. We must step up this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. You see, if you don't step up, a time will come, you will think, that what I'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated. Are we together now? You will be frustrated. Number three, the third thing you must expect every time, this will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite. You must expect revival revival and awakening this is a place a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually where people who have given up maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces pastors who used to walk with fire churches that used to burn something happened for whatever reason this is the place to come and find restoration that you can say look i don't know what is wrong with me I used to love God. I used to be passionate. Now, I don't know what is happening. Let me go and find out. Part of the vision God has given us is to make this place a place of refiring. A place of revival. Hallelujah. That in, in the days of the generals, they had places, the doors of the churches were open 24 hours. There were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city. You didn't even need a pastor. If something was wrong with you, just go there and lie down. We've had a few of those places, even in this place. Many of you do not know. Some years ago in the campus, where it used to be long tennis court, there were so much spiritual investments in that place, it became an open heavens, literally. That's when you see people carry their results probation 
they just go and lie down with rechargeable no prayer they are just saying lord kill me here if if it it, it it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled a sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say lord i'm here i'm here for you i'm, I'm here for you and i'm telling you mantles that fell upon people this is a preface to what i'm about to share tonight we must restore mantles back to the church. We must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge. It's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure. Imagine if all the hospitals in Nigeria go on strike. We'll give birth on the road. People will die in cars. The moment somebody has an accident, we run. And you see the confidence of the doctors. You are welcome. They don't move with hospitals around. They station it in a place. And you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital. Those who trek, those on bike, they just want to get there. Because they know if I arrive, I'm, I don't even know what is wrong with me. I think it's headache, but let the doctor speak. And when certain doctors try and it fails, they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field. They are called specialists. They look at you and they say, go and lie down. We are operating you. Something is wrong. Ah, doctor, what? Lie down. We have seen many of these kind of cases. You are not feeling fine. Do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of Christ today? Every city is supposed to have these provisions. When a city does not have that provision, there is no apostolic authority over their city. The hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city. Where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city. Please, I want you to hear what I'm saying. You can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities it's not a name it's not a title it's an office they are the gatekeepers of the happenings of god in that city they communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church when darkness is about to enter that city they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city stop koinonia for one month and see what will happen in this city that's when you will know what we represent in the spirit never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people god's idea is that in every city there must be apostolic authorities but because of the disalignment of many people those who have called up have, have been called have refused to align god will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there this is the concept of multiplication of grace. When people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit, God will have to come to his servant and say, this was initially not in your curriculum, but to not to frustrate my counsel, I know how uneasy it is for you, but I will multiply your grace. You see that? When I multiply your grace, I will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage, like a territory, will also enter certain dimensions. You will know when an apostolic authority has expanded. You will see the influence of that ideology. See, let me tell you. The church in Nigeria, our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in Nigeria are pastors. I don't mean pastors like Kaito. It was never that design. But there is a sudden restoration. If a pastor ever functions, and a prophet ever functions, and an evangelist ever functions, if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities, they will get into error. Because you see, the primary of an assignment of the of the apostolic office is not just teaching is kingdom governance they administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation and they supervise its safe delivery any true apostle of god that you know is a hard person the word of god is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament 
the grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace even if you are a quiet person they're coming from afar they're coming from afar oh, oh, oh. Oh 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 If our parents understood this structure many of them will never be where they are now they are sincere people but they are victims of the disorganization of the church so they had nobody to learn and nobody to challenge who was lying to them are we together the church structure was so designed so that anybody can teach anything and claim his 20 years in ministry when it comes to these matters is by the spirit no it's by the spirit you don't say I'm 120 years old and you are teaching nonsense and misleading God's people. Brothers and sisters, the spiritual protocol has been observed for your progress in the spirit. I want you to know this and take advantage of it. We are not in error as to the strategies that will build you. If you don't build this a lapse on your own path. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So revival. Oh, may this place remain a place. If you know people who are weary and out, you can just drag them. Somebody tells you, me now, I've done everything you can think about. And you are trying to talk to the person and you just tell the person, come. I know a place where the river flows from Zion. And I will just come and keep you in that atmosphere. The person may even come late, just like many people outside here. And while they listen, something is happening. It's more than the words we speak there is a spirit communication if it were words believe me you will be tired by now there is a difference between newness and freshness will you open up the gate open up the door Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Mandala Kaparados. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Sing it from your heart to your maker. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the door. In your name, we will rise. I don't lie. You reign on high. Adonai, Adonai, yeah. Adonai, yeah. you ready know. Sing in your name, in your name. Malaka parakos kata brande gadebash. We will rise. Ena na na Maria Moso na na Maria na. Sing Adonai, 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 Adonai. Hey, just the voices. Adonai, Adonai. Mende kalabasoto putia. Our territory will not fail. We will not misrepresent the kingdom. You reign on high. You reign on high. Sing Adonai. Adonai. 
Vena masona malana na 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 Jena na mosona na maria Na dona Please sit down if you can. Be sensitive to what God is doing tonight. Adonai, you reign on Adonai. Adonai. The last thing to expect every time you come for koinonia is a demonstration of the power of God. It's a doom to any territory where there are no instruments that can bring the supernatural to a people. It's a doom to any territory when the sick and the helpless cannot have an alternative. There must be a spiritual center that represents the might of God in a city. There must be a place where men can know that these demons disturbing my life can go. We are unapologetic about stamping the gates of hell within our territory. In the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was said to be the cleanest city. Hallelujah. E.W. Kenyon so many people have received this message without carrying his mantle a truck hit somebody in his church pieces the leg he stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back it was not a strange miracle that was the miracle of ushers we have lost so much we are not aware we don't know our spiritual heritage pastors don't research they just get up and preach nonsense nonsense and everybody claims he's doing something i don't say this in a cynical way my heart is pain because th there are souls that are lean and hungry nothing current in what the spirit is doing we celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suit and we have a nice car to prove that it is working is that how much we love the body we have lost touch with our spiritual heritage. We don't know what happened before we came. And we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of God. A custodian of a mystery is also a historian. One who meticulously studies the dealings of God. How did God move in the 50s? How did God move in the 60s? How did God move in the 80s? When revivals died, what happened? Have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy? They were just searching the connecting prophecy. And when it was time for them to die, they left the curriculum for whoever would take up. Ministry is full time. Full time. Your entire life is spent guiding the people of God. Ministry is not a vocation. Where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that i don't feel like i've wasted my life i just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when i start buying a nice shoe and i can afford suit or something or i have a crowd brothers and sisters it's more than that it's more than that it's more than that this place is a place of healing a place of miracles my goodness the number of text messages i get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming overwhelming when banks close for public holiday it affects a territory if they close by thursday people cannot wait for monday Monday morning, everybody is standing and arguing with their ATM, no matter how much they have in their account, because they, they miss the bank for three days. I'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival. The spirit of true 
revival. Night on night, you reign on night. Revelation chapter 3. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts is what I've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing heart is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Jesus. See, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, it, services will run every day. Something must be happening spiritually. I, I don't believe in all this coldness then one day people just come around and scramble two hours snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take no 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 go and ask a habalist if he goes on vacation ask him if he goes on holiday we must make the body of christ an institution these are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement when you are tired that's when somebody is when you are you are charged that's when somebody else is tired there will always be people oh i look forward to those times center for kingdom activities there's a message playing there's worship playing there is a place to flog it out activities of angels that's what will happen listen listen we are not a social welfare group we are not we are not contributing to helping government no we are not helping any government we are enforcing something that this thing they are doing is nonsense we are not a part of it we are loyal citizens but this is not our ideology so i'm not i'm not in partnership with any government doing anything we are not social welfare we are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent there are there are few territories where you go that you i mean there should be these kinds of places these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere right and just pray and see somebody praying with you a christian library books about generals where you go and sit down and study there are dvds playing archives not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this hallelujah yeah. your rent has expired nobody is helping you you just know that there is a place where you find comfort you go and see people like you crying to god you are crying 10,000. Somebody say 1 million. Say, oh Lord, I find comfort in you. A city of refuge. Do you know why many believers compromise? There is no kingdom community. That community life of the kingdom is not there. There is no place they can retreat to. When they have been wounded and beaten by darkness. When their faith is stretched, there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge. And you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise. They will allow you to do any conference you want. But make up your mind to create a physical portal for people. All hell will fight it. And those people will usually be Christians. We owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things. 
there has to be somebody in ancient times they usually are these elders and when israel starts messing up moses and all the people will say okay let me remind you because then some of you were not born how by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of egypt right he did this and that and the people are listening and at the end of it the people say ah we repent we will serve the lord satan's plot is to destroy people like us so that there, there, there is there are no more there, there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church we, we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result i'm telling you may it please the lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he's doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him on the earth because he's pressing to find expression when when anna was mocked by penina where did she run to was it closed she knew where to run to right now let me tell you where we run to every other place is closed only the herbal home the man says i'm, I'm here any day any time just come with your goat and you see a christian dragging a he goat to a, a herbal home and we have the mouth to criticize them we have the mouth to call everybody fake there are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake right ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body let me tell you if i'm sick if i were not born again and i'm sick and dying i will go to any herbalist i don't care anybody that is talking to me I hear what I'm saying. I will not do it in the secret. I will do it openly. How many people have died in the church who should not die? Because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them. There are people who are sick today. They are dying. Some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night. They will criticize me in the day and call in the night. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Oh, sing, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and we cut us. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty in this place. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host the full dimension of what he seeks to do. We must pay the price of alignment in the spirit for God to find a people. Listen, don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with God. What are you doing? I'm a pastor. No, no, no. What are you doing for a living? Look at that stupid statement. As though being a man of God is a call to... They just look at you as if you, you have your whole life as wasted. Shame on our degree of backsliding. Believe me. I, I've come with a mantle of revival tonight. My heart pains me when I see this thing. 
as I travel around regions, I know that men of God are doing their best. But I'm telling you, there's got to be true apostolic voices. It's not a title. It's not a name. It's an election of grace. When will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge? There are people who have come right now. Do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up, standing? Some wanting to be healed, wanting to be blessed. I can hardly attend to one-tenth of people. It is never my intention to be a superstar. The problem is there is a price. It's not a gift. We have been deceived that it's a gift. Let me tell you. I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances. I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom, it's an office. It's not a, it's not a title. It's an office. Paul says, how that by revelation it was revealed to me. This mystery. This mystery. It will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us. Spirit of revival. There's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little, people are looking, they are feeling offended for your prayer life because they are hoping you backslide so that it will, it will, it will make them comfortable. Your, your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow. And seeing you increase is frustrating them recycling of revelations in the body of Christ because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh things are happening over territories we pastors are moving around with deaf ears no seeing eyes no hearing ear please we are going to pray just for one minute before I continue are we together you are going to say Lord revive my life Revive my life. Please pray. Inside and outside, pray. Revive my life. This can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. This can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. This can't be it. Oh, don't deceive yourself. You know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. Calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling us deeper, deeper, deeper. Please sit down, sit down. sit down a revival is a season of reawakening a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy a reawakening
a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy spiritual inertia inactivity in the life of a people and a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival is a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit first in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory and it brings a reawakening an awareness I'm going to be very fast because I want us to pray. How do I know that a territory, please help me. How do I know that a territory is under the influence of a revival? Thank you. There are certain parameters. Number one, the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for God corporately not just individually there is a restoration of god consciousness in that territory when there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow smoke anyhow live anyhow do anything they want to do when they want to do it it may not be their fault but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed increase god consciousness there have been times through history when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god when they look at you today and they say where is your phone imagine someone who you ask him um what's your number and he said number that's strange right you look at the person have you been existing in that this our generation imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it you know something is wrong right because there's a better technology than that that's what happens in a revival people are forced to talk about the move of god the newspapers are forced to carry something do you know that in the days of the generals right the newspapers hardly discussed politics it was in a critical way but they were always talking now we are so idle the newspapers know if they write about us they will not sell so they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it the moment they say a man of god moves in their not because they are all these stupid people they have come again look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society they are irritated when they see our faces upon papers in the times of evan roberts people will lay hands on the magazine just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take people will start falling under the anointing repenting by themselves having visions of jesus restoration of love and passion for god don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out light the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out light the fire again listen let me tell you how the spirit of the antichrist works in a territory the first thing that happens is satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one are you seeing that now so the man of god who god did business with in the last revival usually what happens is that because of what is happening there is what we call premature satisfaction little result 
Oh, Apostle Joshua Selman, you are the talk of the town. The, Satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it. We like names. We like titles. We like accolades. Oh, here comes the man of God. The one who raises the dead and, and, and heals the sick. And we, we pride ourselves to our detriment. We love honor. There is an obsession about it. We can do anything for it. Including backsliding. So what happens is that people keep watching. The devil keeps watching this thing. Your prayerlessness starts increasing. Your wordlessness starts increasing. But he will never strike. He will allow you. And then he will throw all kinds of persecutions. Get my teaching why revivals die. You know, all those kinds of things together. When that person is watered down, God no longer has a voice. Listen, there is a difference between God speaking to you in your secret place and God speaking to a territory. God has his mouthpieces everywhere. And then compromises begin to come in. What you would have talked about, you no longer talk about. Let me tell you how Satan destroys great men. He makes us victims of our messages. If Satan knows that God has anointed me to liberate people in an area, he will do everything within his power to make me a victim of those areas. The reason is because when that happens, you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might. Are you seeing why you need discipline? Love for God. Love for God. Your passion, your obsession about God. When you love God, there are indices. There must be a restoration of that love. Some of you sitting down looking at me, you know how you were with God. Tell yourself the truth. Ah! Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. You see, if you love God because of husband, the day the husband comes, there's no more pursuit to love God. You see why we teach? Look, you know, I teach you a balanced teaching here. When you tie your love for God to things, as a bride, you are in for a shock. I can love God because of anointing. I hope you know that. And that anointing can lead me to go and fast because I want power. The day the power comes and I can have one or two results, I now know that the anointing has come. Are we together now? So no matter what I... You don't know my secret place. Is it not when I come out here? It's only God that knows whether I'm serious over what I'm saying or not. You cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of God is serious with God or not. Because you see, God is so merciful. He will always confirm his word in the midst of the people. And it usually is a justification to men of God to mean they are intact. Be careful. That God is still using you and the power of God is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing. You must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning. Love for God. I am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for God. Lord, if you do this for me, I will come and testify. And then the other part of the story, we don't say it out, but it's in our heart. If you don't do it, I will hate you. So, it doesn't seem to happen. Oh God, no husband again. Am I the worst sinner on earth? And, and you hear all those kinds of statements. How can you tie your love for God for these kinds of things? success can distract men please hear this there are many teachings on success that i'll bring this year but let me tell you success can distract more than failure in fact failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong but success can distract whenever you begin to see your candle rise brothers and sisters that's when to catch god that's not when to leave him and say everybody behold the celebrity you will die like a chicken when Satan wants to throw you, he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you. He throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again. Because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why certain people will not be serious with God and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody and then something will happen and crash them down. Love for God. This night, we are addressing our love for God. Lovest thou me more than this. One of the first indices of a true revival. We can look at Zaria as a city and Samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city. We can look at ABU as a campus and know whether our love for God has diminished. When somebody, let me not go ahead of myself. Number two, marks characteristics of a true revival. Number two, the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness over a territory and outpouring brothers and sisters may God never make our territories without men who can speak the truth are you hearing what I'm saying the devil is out to frustrate men of God and water down people who can speak the truth please let me tell you something Brothers and sisters, if you are a Christian, many things must change in your life. Your lifestyle must change. Your conversation must change. Not by the energy of the flesh. There is an alignment. Your job is to do that alignment. If you do it well, the transformation must happen. There's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of Christ. To a point that somebody will have to say, I'm a Christian. For it to, Oh, you're a Christian, so you're a brother in the faith. That's a serious issue. Are we here? You, you see a Christian sit somewhere and he's talking. My goodness, you are embarrassed. Until you start talking about koinonia, for instance, and say, ah, koinonia, you know apostle, ah, you know he's to see me. You say, you mean you are there? In Antioch, it was unbelievers. Who called people who were a reproduction of Christ? They call them Christians. Who is calling you a Christian? Can those who hate you say, I hate this person? No, but I know he's a Christian. You can't be drinking and smoking and say it's just my body that is drinking, my spirit is okay. You are not all right. Please, let's let's end this. You are not all right. Let me tell you the truth. No, you are not all right. You are watching porn. See, you see, let me tell you something. I'm not condemning you. Don't get me wrong. The difference between a Christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the Spirit. When, when you are sinning unconvicted, you are not in Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yeah. If by the work of the flesh somebody falls into a habit, you went to your friends. They reminded you of Gulda that you used to take. You don't know what happened. You gave into the flesh. That conviction is a sign that you are in Christ, that you can return. And the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. It says, and the truth is not in us. It said, but if we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. If we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. It says, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have you turned that out of your Bible? Because it's supposed to be there. The true spirit of holiness. Please. I speak especially to the young people. All of us who are young people in this region. Let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing. Are we together? Some people were discussing me somewhere. And uh, I got to hear, of course, one of the ladies said, ah, person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how i'm doing i'm very fine very fine very fine healthy in the spirit very fine i intend to continue with god for a long time i decided that from the start of the journey we are afraid of the responsibility that firm decision brings because we know it will have to force us we still want to enjoy some things you see that because if you make a firm decision you too you know you know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number but you don't want to so you are not serious that's the meaning it's as simple as that because you leave 
Jesus, I leave. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you leave. Jesus, I leave today. I leave to pray. A true spirit of revival that you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there. When the old man wants to touch it, he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross. And you mind your business and leave that money there. Even though you needed money to eat. The spirit of holiness. Let me tell you, if we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory, we will never experience the fullness of God. We will not see miracles and signs and wonders. Please, let's not mock God. I know what I'm saying is hard, but you too, you know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. Don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life. And the key to unholiness is carelessness. Carelessness. Bros, you did. There's one party we're having. You say, yeah, but I don't drink again. They just come, Jerry. Carelessness. Lord settled near Sodom. Lord settled near Sodom. Let Lord settle near Sodom. You take advantage of the grace of God and produce a life that is worthy. Please don't feel condemned. I speak to all of us here, those who are here and those who are following us. The goal is not to condemn you, but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holiness and power go hand in hand. Don't ever deceive yourself. That you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of God. You can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of God. There has to be true holiness. There has to be true holiness. I'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say, Lord, restore to my life the spirit of holiness. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Especially if you know you are affected by what I'm saying, please pray. This is a threshing floor, it's a family. Please lay your hands and say, Lord, I've been pretending as if this is not an issue. But tonight, you have brought your word out of love. Not to condemn me, but to remind me that you are still waiting. I receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness. Those outside, please make sure you are laying your hand. Oh, I separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh. The impulses of the flesh. The appetites of the flesh. The appetite, the lust and the carnality that destroy great men. Lord, I'm going far. The spirit of holiness must come upon my life. It must come upon my life. I receive a restoration. Lord, I used to have it, but something happened. I gave in to women. I gave in to men. I gave in to drinking. I gave in to wrong relationships. I was lonely. And I allowed, I, I frustrated the manifestation. But tonight, oh God, in this place, I receive grace, grace, grace. It's not by the strength of the flesh. You can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh. Remember the cross, the place where grace comes from. Your old man has been nailed. Therefore, mortify your body. Take advantage of that grace. Let it become an instrument of righteousness. Please pray. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. God is not a native doctor. Godliness. True holiness. That's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality. Help us, oh God. That in lifestyle, in character, in conversation, that everything about your life, there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job, in school, in your atmosphere, not by condemning others, not by reading people off, that's the flesh you won't glorify God that way 
but that you carry a compelling presence hallelujah before we continue pray again say lord i overcome carelessness in my life some of us are already at the verge god is bringing this as a prophetic message because some of us are already dwindling visiting the guy carelessly doing all kinds of things carelessly you are a christian god is bringing this message to salvage you get back to order get back to order get back to order get back to order the true spirit of holiness no you can't start accepting bribe not at this level of your life you used to hate it before don't all of a sudden love bribe you are a christian and a christian indeed the spirit of god in you and the righteousness of god compels you to hate immorality not out of fear but because of your love for god and your desire to be used by him make sure it doesn't leave that's a fire you must not allow to die aside from immorality and the rest what of vain glory what of self-seeking what of vanity ambitions that are not consistent with christ please pray this is a threshing floor tonight those of us outside make sure you are praying if nobody has told you there is a problem with your life i'm telling you there is if you are giving room to the flesh i don't care what excuse you bring god does not condemn but he does not condone evil many of us have been praying lord i want you to use me i want to see your power i'm showing you the secret it overrides fasting and prayer hallelujah let's hurry up number three the third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place the third sign is massive salvation of souls genuine salvation genuine salvation genuine salvation it's not enough for people to come and be saved they must be saved well well to stay well and grow massive salvation that is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival listen if there is no true passion for souls in your heart something is wrong let me prove to you that it's unnatural how many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident nobody asks who is a christian there or who is a muslim everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying every time you see sinners i want you to imagine an accident scene imagine a fatal accident what would you do there are some of us we have roommates we have people in our workplaces is until maybe three months to leave Zaria that they stumble across Koinonia and they come and find you there and you see them crying and say this is what you have been enjoying say I'm too fine how can I tell this guy to come how can I lead him to Christ massive salvation so, so. by the way the Lord while I was preparing this the Lord gave me an instruction i'll say during the announcement but then let me say it again by god's grace next friday's miracle service you are coming with two sets of requests the first is the names of your family members and loved ones those who you have tried to get them born again come and watch god will do for them this year you will watch what god will do he will surprise you i, I will I, please you are permitted to write a full scrap sheet of names if you have it write it down right no matter i don't care who they are don't you let the devil tell you god cannot save any man if he saved you he can save any man even pharaoh although he didn't repent but he acknowledged that there was god ne ne nebuchadnezzar acknowledged god turned him into an animal leave the how to god god knows where to touch them and force them to come to christ 
when Saul landed on the floor, he knew that this was God. See, God knows where to touch the arrogance of any man. Are we together? So you're going to bring one prayer request, your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones, but please write it down. Not names of enemies and that's not what I'm asking you. Names of sinners, sinners, people who you know you are agreeing with God. Let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of God on your life. Be passionate about where his heart is. Are we together? If I'm a millionaire and you want to get my attention, won't you look for what interests me? And also be passionate because that will be the meeting point are we together we want to call god's attention but we are not facing where his heart is facing it's not enough to pray and fast you must be serious about sinners there are some of us when we make altar calls here you now look at time and say okay, let's hurry up to you it's not a big deal you've forgotten that he saved you you've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again i remember one of our ladies who years ago they were all unbelievers you know non-christians now i mean and god i mean saved her she became saved i think while on campus and we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings god touched her brother i think god touched her mother three of them were all saved remaining the father the father was a hardened he wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom we told her keep praying don't, don't say god will not touch them keep praying one day she received a call he was saved in living faith when he was saved i was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car he's i don't know it's like his family members they drove down and say which depression are you in that would have made you to become a christian ah you will see salvations that will scare you the day you go and look at somebody in your family you would think it's a mistake you just yeah, you say what are you doing say i'm praying in tongues say are you joking say I, I, i'm a sanctuary keeper I'm, I'm i've i've left the world since i used to have a bad colleague years ago one time i heard that he was a pastor in salem ministry i said it's a lie so one day he called me and we we're talking we just spoke and he was, i said tell me it's a joke tell me it's a joke these guys were the fence jumpers these guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning and now he has been changed please don't conclude on any man don't conclude on any man that roommate you are seeing you know every friday she's not around till monday morning wait and see what god does with her the reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe god can touch people there's nobody on earth today that god cannot save there is hope for the living there is hope for the living is god helping us please we are going to see massive salvation make sure you don't allow people without you can give them koinonia messages you can pray for them if you don't have the courage drag them and bring them to koinonia just like many people as i'm talking now there are many people who will respond to the altar call right now they came because they were invited when you love souls you can pay for them to come if 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again don't say you love god don't say you love god when a guy loves a lady he can have five thousand in his account he will withdraw it leave the minimum balance and tell her eat she say i don't want to stress your body say no 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 don't eat it's me that is paying for this thing but when it comes to souls we are afraid well someone is telling you Kai, I, I would love god but he's giving flimsy excuses why don't you tell the person two of us let's climb bike and come are you that passionate and unembarrassed do that and see the way god wipes your tears see these are kingdom keys there are no shortcuts to this thing souls when i pray many times i say oh god use koinonia as a platform to save sinners you see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming i tell you give them chance to come i remember somebody uh, I, I i don't know exactly i think he was he's, he's an imam or something one of these these uh, very strong guys he was seated outside when i was teaching the reality of heaven and hell this was somebody who is learned you understand what i'm saying and he sat down outside and was thinking 
and while I was teaching he saw a vision of Jesus outside and he got born again the day he came for counseling I could not believe it ushers I think one or two people there's one of our brothers in ushers too who was like that now totally transformed serving the Lord working in the ocean department who told you God cannot save them your stubborn father your stubborn mother your missing brother who comes back once in three months I'm telling you when the power of God lands on them we don't know the power that raised Christ from the dead that's why because all we are teaching about in church is money we don't know the power if a power can raise a dead body is it to transform one who is alive that it will not change him? number four let's run the fourth mark or characteristic of a true revival is passion for the house of God now please hear me I say this sincerely from the depth of my heart and I, I mean no condemnation with this but when as men of God we celebrate small ministries and small churches to mean no I'm like that me God gave me this I don't believe in that concept I know that crowd is not the ultimate determinant as to whether God is there but brothers and sisters people must be saved and they must have passion for the house of God because that's when they are taught the precepts of the kingdom the church is God's portal to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom it's not enough for people to be born again that's why we, co we collect their details we send them text messages and follow them up what's wrong with getting people born again and get their numbers once in a while you send them a scripture maybe the person is about to go back to alcohol and ah, the text comes and you say maybe it's a scripture love not the world looks at your phone looks at that bottle and he knows and the spirit of god you have given him access to kick in and he drops it never to pick it again there's no support structure in the body of christ to help sinners stand once they are born again we say, okay now just find your way back to your seat and the lord help you that's why when people get born again we recommend to them because the ministry is still growing we don't have all the avenues to do all the things we want to do right we recommend them to go to the prayer department at least for one month even if they don't intend to be members just to join that's the only other large platform we have to minister to the people that's why pray for us pray for this ministry that god will take us to the next level fast and you will see the things that are in store for the body of christ passion for the house of god when coming to the house of god hear me let me use koinonia this is our platform when coming to koinonia suddenly becomes an endurance please i want you to know that something is already wrong with your spiritual life are we together now yeah you just sit down and say kai this thing self to six i will even sit down outside it's like it's cold abby those things are indices it's a reaction to something already happening in your spirit i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord the the scripture the anchor scripture that the lord gave us remember the scripture it says the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted and all nations shall flow they will say to themselves come let us go to the house of the lord to the mount of god for there he will teach us his ways he said for out of zion shall proceed the lord passion passion there are people you see them january koinonia and then later on maybe when result is out or something it just coincides with a miracle service they now drag themselves and come and sit outside and of all the prophecies that are coming they are just waiting for when they talk about academics the moment they say for your academics they now they are now invited immediately they finish they run that game you are playing with god you will not win Praise the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Any ministry that is truly committed in soul winning will not be small what we are doing in the church is sheep stealing 
what did i call it sheep stealing when you steal a sheep a sheep is not a fool it grew somewhere eventually ah you see i am the good shepherd my sheep here know my voice and we, we steal sheep we are we are trying to steal choices quality sheep. so if sam please stand up sam if sam is a millionaire i want that kind of sheep around because i know the relevance of the sheep to that pasture or that place that attitude every time we see unbelievers you see somebody with his draggy jeans you know this guy you even need to support him back we don't like those kind of souls the person calls you daddy say who is your i'm not your father i don't know you i just got you born again please look for somebody else these are the kinds of, ah, this is my son you are, i'm well pleased that carnal attitude are you getting what i'm saying so when if that's why i say it to the glory of god and you know here I know no man after the flesh i will not go to anybody's house and say um you are a senator uh, your daughter is a member in our ministry we, we have we, we want to buy boss god will use people there is nobody that i will reject on grounds of anything whether your father is a carpenter or a pilot it doesn't matter hallelujah we don't love the sheep and they know they know when, they know the type of sheep we love when you see a beautiful lady say you are you are my daughter daughter how are you and you keep stressing that lady even when she leaves your ministry she's wondering what do you like me or the beauty see members are not idiots they know pastors who are serious they know they know pastors who are playing games you just gather phone numbers of very pretty ladies these are this is what we do that destroy us are we together now or we gather the number of people who are rich and all of that and oh no, there is a place for honor don't get me wrong what i'm saying this thing we are doing is too much is sheep stealing how many of us are willing to labor on sinners until they become true saints the Bible says the kingdom of God is like a, a, remember the story of a shepherd, right? 99 sheep. One got missing. What did he do to the 99? They were all right. So he left them and went, still not minding if he loses the 99, went to look for that one. Is that our attitude? When somebody comes to stand, you are looking whether he's holding an envelope. If it's not, you look at his shoe, look at his watch and say, let's pray. Father, help this person and you are praying. Don't waste my time here. But when somebody comes package you're like what are they what let me let me know the needs if you're a pastor here please do this thing truly god is going to judge us not in a condemning way we are going to be accountable for this act as if there is an authority above you members know let me tell you there is no member who will see a man of god talking like i'm talking who will not love him and be open to him do you know why many of our members in different churches i'm speaking apostolically there are many people listening do you know why many members they know their pastors don't like them they know it they can't truly call this person my pastor my father somebody i can come and talk to because they know that the pastors want money they want what will make them proud by god's grace we don't destroy our wounded soldiers here no matter what you have done we enter the hole with you and come out together a good shepherd doesn't stand on his sheep and leaves a trophy. He lays down his life for his sheep. Passion for the house of God. Number five. Quickly. Passion for the word. Indices that measure a revival in a place. Passion for the word. Passion for prayer. Passion for a life of worship. You can know whether a territory is under the influence of the spirit of revival by how much people hunger for the word. Jordan Bookstore is there. He will tell you. I know that people love the word in this place. I'm even careful to announce certain books because you announce it by tomorrow. There are people who are already there getting books, studying, buying concordance. Truly, let me tell you, I'm shocked at people's low level of passion for the word of god when i started out with god sometimes he would come and see different kinds of bibles our money was spent buying bible not just to look for rema we didn't have the privilege to learn greek and hebrew so you listen we buy bible on tape bombard it put it in your ears 
I had one rechargeable there. All kinds of songs. All kinds of songs. In the night you played. But right now, what do we do with our money? We don't do anything for the kingdom. You buy one small Bible that looks like a phone. You just carry You cannot even see what is there. You don't care because you don't read it. You don't read it. Obviously, you don't read it. Please, let's take this thing of God seriously. When do you close yourself and study? Not just devotional, where you read fast. As you are praying, you are on your way going. Oh, I see this. Uh, God, and then scripture for reading. Luke chapter this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. You just drop it and run. Ask the person what he is running towards. He will tell you he is looking for money or a meaningful life. And we have left the word of life. I found your word and I did eat them. And they were a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Passion for the world. Passion for worship. Many of us don't worship. We pray and we study the world. There is a place for worship in your spiritual growth. If you don't have worship tapes. Now, technology has made it easy. Put these things. I have a selection in my phone. I call them deep worship. There's one called encounter. That one, when, when I'm high in the spirit, I just switch. Not all songs minister to me at the same level. I have studied what the anointing does and the songs that help them. Has it happened to you like that? Yeah. You put the songs. Don't just say Christian songs and then uh, uh, motivational songs. No, no, no. Separate this thing and take God seriously. You have a selection. The moment you just hear a Christian one, there is another one diluting your spirit and then midway after you enjoy it small just to satisfy the guilt you now quickly run to don Muen. don't please saints of god i admonish you in the name of jesus christ guard your heart with all diligence your destiny depends on it you will never find one on christian song in my field i'm not one of those people who say look we need to work with technology i'm not a fool Technology has failed us. Many things, governments have failed us. It's obvious they are ignorant. We used to say it before, but there was no room to expose it. Right now, it's clear that the government of nations are clueless. Come to the kingdom and mend the ways of God. The years to come will show the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit. We are like the virgins that are taking extra oil now. A time will come when those who had that oil, they will not have anything again. Satan does not give anything free. Have you not learned? A day will come. The day he meets all the people celebrating him, they will pay with their life. Satan never gives you a thing free. He will give you, you will think he's dash, but his business. He will come in the future for everything. Anybody that serves the devil knows that it's a fraternity unto death. The end is death. Create an atmosphere of worship. Create an atmosphere of the world. Get Bible. I have, I have a, a very beautiful software that I got. Just the words of Jesus. They just pick them through the Gospels. Just everywhere Jesus spoke. Just the words of Jesus. Always oh, beautiful. With worship playing in the background like this. I tell you, you will wash your spirit. You know how you When you listen, you will know you are getting clean through the word. The word cleanses. Cleanses your mind. Sometimes I sleep and let it keep playing. And I have visions and encounters. You wake up shaking under the presence of God. You create an atmosphere that cannot be denied. This is how it happens. What if I have roommates that are not serious? That's why you have a phone. You cry to God for a good phone. He gave it to you. Use it well. Use it well. Not just for sending text messages. Use it well. How much does it take to download? I mean, there are Android devices with one, two thousand naira. Don't say I cannot afford it. Your hair, your shoulder, your knees, your toes. Look at all you have used your money that God gave you for building your spirit to just build your body alone. Remember, your spirit is better than your body. Invest in it first. Number. Let's hurry up. We're almost done. When there is a true revival in a place, there is an outburst of financial miracles and sociological advancement. Listen, revival affects the quality of the living 
of the people with India. Don't think when you subscribe to the things of God and a revival comes, um, it means that other areas of your life will suffer. No, when there is a real revival, the quality of the life of God's people is improved. Almost every major technological advancement is connected to a revival. It's just that the historians remove the God factor out and make it look like somebody just discovered something. A lot of the people who made strange discoveries, they did them coinciding with periods of revival. And most of those people were either Christians or came from Christian families. When the spirit of revival is upon you, you will be rich. You will be blessed. Because the presence of God will compel favor upon your life. When a ministry is under that kind of open heavens, they will enjoy supplies. People will do well. People will get jobs. There will be marriages. There will be blessings. There will be children. There will be all kinds of breakthroughs. Don't make it look as if when you seek God, you will be in trouble. No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33 tells us. He said, and his righteousness, if you do that properly, he says, all other things shall be added to you as well. Amen. Seven. When there is the true spirit of revival in a place, there is an outburst of miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, this is very important. There's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great revival in our land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Miracles. I believe in miracles. Believe me. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can step into people's lives and change their stories. We've seen all kinds of testimonies in this place. That's what is going to happen to many of you this night. Koinonia remains a place of healing, a place of miracles. Because of people's inability to contend for the true healing power. They say, look, um, um, healing. When they say healing, they are quick. You say, no, 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 emotional healing. Please, physical healing. People are sick. Their bodies are sick. Are we together now? Yes, there's a place for emotional healing. But we usually say those things because there's no physical index to prove whether they are healed or not. If somebody is blind and is healed, he is healed. Is that not true? We must contend for grace even in this dimension. Say amen. And may it happen through your hands. There is a joy when God uses you. There is a joy when God does things around you. But when it happens through your hands, it's a blessing. I trust that God will use us to begin to lay hands on the sick and speak to people. That they note you and say, Ah, I, I came to Amaka and she prayed with me and doors just opened. Great testimony. Ella agreed with me. She prophesied something over my life. Oh, I met Aaron crying on something and he spoke over my life. Some of us are so backward in the area of the miraculous. Even if somebody said you prayed with me and something happened, say no, it's because you came for koinonia. You must believe God in your life. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Any pastor in this day and age who is not serious about the miraculous should be prepared for empty pews. I guarantee you. Any pastor who is not ready for the demonstration of the miraculous people are not looking if they are looking for where to watch film there's silver bed there are many there's cinema and all kinds of places people don't come to church to watch movies they come to church because they have real problems is that not true they need the power of god head on in their lives lastly the final index that shows that their atmosphere is under the influence of revival is impartation of gifts, graces, and mantles. Impartations. See, revivals are times where God recruits people into his army. Most people stepped into the call of God upon their life at revivals. When people are just praying non-stop for a while, the Holy Ghost 
separate me Paul and Barnabas there has to be release of mantles graces impartations it happens during revivals there will be almost no impartations when revival is not in a place remember a man in the Bible called Agabus he had daughters and all of them were prophets there are few people who have carried those kinds of mantles that can come from father to children God knows my children God knows before they arrive there will be a special recording waiting for them as soon as they arrive straight on before the nonsense that society brings this and that you are stupid you are foolish no. they will receive something they will start having visions and encounters of Jesus that's why I respect and I want us to appreciate them I respect every parent in this place who come with their babies and their children let them sleep and sleep in the presence of God it was in the presence of God Samuel was sleeping when he had the voice of God even if you must sleep do it in the presence of God because although your body is sleeping your spirit is receiving impartations of mantles and graces that's what is happening to some of you some of you in the nearest future God will send you to territories and you'll be the ones doing this thing I'm doing right now when you stand one day you will just stop in the middle of the congregation and tears will come down and you will tell them once upon a time I sat down quietly I remember when I used to go for meetings and sit down and I hear the man of God say out of this place God will raise great men and people are shouting amen some are sleeping some are playing some are not serious and I just sit down there and I say really I could imagine the angels and all these people saying young man pay attention there are destinies tied to you very quickly what is the price what is the requirement for revival and we're going to pray I'll just give you four of them quickly and then we're done sorry I may not have time to read the scriptures is God blessing you tonight the first price requirement for true revival not assumed revival true revival is consecration the first price you want to host the glory of God the first requirement is consecration media help us with one scripture that I found very interesting Isaiah 52 verse 11 I'll, I'll just read the other ones while they pull up that one for us 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 to 21 says nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure it says having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his it says and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity iniquity is not just sin fornication and the rest no it's a state of your heart that produces those workings of the flesh let's read this scripture together one to read depart ye depart ye go ye out from thence touch no unclean thing it says go ye out from the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the lord those that host precious things from god he says depart depart ye. consecration consecration very very important set apart for his service set apart the bible says there is no man who warreth and tangles himself we want to be civilians and soldiers at the same time it doesn't happen no consecration consecration is understood when you look at monks and sisters in a convent you know that that dedication they have decided that they are not going to get married for the purpose of their service to the kingdom you must dedicate your whole life some of us have given God half of our lives some of us gave God everywhere excluding your head and your thinking some of us gave God everything no, no, no. You have to give him everything. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty.
Oh, morning star, you truly are. Number two, the second prize is hunger and thirst. You want to see revival in your life, there must be a hunger for it. Isaiah 44 verse 3 and Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. I'm giving this to us very quickly because of time. He will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Him that is what? There must be a thirst. I will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Do you have that hunger? I'm telling you, I have an insatiable hunger to see revival in my life. I want to see the revival power of God in my life. That everywhere I go to regions to minister, I leave a deposit of the spirit of revival in that place. Hunger and thirst. Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. He says, O oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. He say, my soul pants after you. Right? In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Do you have that hunger and thirst to see revival in your life? It was men like John Knox that prayed and said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. We quote it and have no passion at all. Number three. The price for revival. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fasting. Prolonged seasons. You don't pray for one week and see revival. There are women who prayed for their children for 20 years non-stop. Before the fire of God fell on them. Prolonged seasons. That's why it's important to be consistent in your prayer life. And please, I talk to everybody here, inside and outside. If your prayer life has nose dived, we welcome you to join the prayer department on Tuesdays. Even if it is for one week, there is fire burning in that place, I tell you. Join and refire yourself. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fastings. Listen. Fasting is a powerful spiritual principle. You don't do it out of religion or out of fear. However, it, it energizes your spirit and promotes you to have faith in God. Really, unbelief is what it challenges. So that the conviction about the reality of God is crystallized in your heart. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. It was while they were in the upper room praying that the Holy Ghost fell. Acts 13 verse 2. It was while they worshipped and prayed and ministered unto the Lord with fasting. The Bible spoke. I mean God spoke to them and said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. Number four. The price for the word of God. Intense study of the word. With a view to living by it not just for head knowledge not like the people the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth intense study of the word of god finally the last price for revival is the sacrifice of time the sacrifice of time you want to see God's might in your life, you must give him time. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you. You are not going to rush God and see his glory. The proof of passion is the investment of time. Anything you love, you have time for it. Please give God time. Remember I told us last week, 
you must give God time. Don't give God one hour. Don't give God two hours. There are times where you have to dedicate a whole day and just say, Lord, this is for you. A time of worship and prayer. Let his presence host you. That day, you are dedicating it just for watching movies that will build your life, Bible stories, watching messages, listening to teachings, worship, prayer. You must even be fasting. You can just focus. This day is unto you. Imagine if someone walked up to you and said, I'm dedicating my tomorrow for you. No matter how antisocial you are, even if you say, no, thank you, you will be happy that somebody can sacrifice his day. When you come to somebody and he tells you, look, I don't have time, I'm busy. Sometimes you feel bad. You feel like ah, this person doesn't value me so much. That's what happens when we come to God and just worship. God, are you aware that I have problems? Okay, I'm aware. Do something about them. I'm on my way. Lord, I give you time. My life is measured in time. And if I give God my life, he must be Lord of my time too. He's Lord of my time. At this level of your life, the time you are spending visiting people and, and gossiping, they are tired of you. Why don't you come to the one who is not tired of you? They don't just have the courage to tell you. They are really tired of you. You are going every time, eating, disturbing, bringing stories that are unnecessary. At a point, you now lie on it because you have to keep moving. I mean, why don't you come to somebody who he never says change to come. He says my presence will change you. Come. Come. I give God time. Anyone who knows me knows that I give God time. Check the amount of time you give to God. Now, of course, if you are working, you don't have all the time. You can't get up doing your job and just shut down that day. No, no, no. no. There are times, there are weekends, there are holidays there are special times you can just say lord you know that it's my desire to spend this much time with you but now that i've had this opportunity i run to you i run to you we don't know what happens in the presence of god when we give him time when the glory of god comes into your life he brings beauty beauty and glory your life will remain a wonder to people if you can be planted by that riverside side hallelujah we're going to pray just three prayer points tonight hallelujah now listen as let me make an altar call before we start praying there are so many people outside and some sitting down here the moment i spoke about revival you know it you know it that you need an awakening in your life there are those who have given their hearts to the lord but truly truly you know that your current state your current state you are not in fellowship with god number two there are people who have never given their lives to christ god brought you here jesus himself orchestrated your coming please don't be stubborn to his voice nobody will put a chain around you and draw you but you know the voice of your shepherd the spirit of every man knows. Hallelujah. As we arise, I want all those people to begin to make their way. Now I'm going to sing once. And as I'm singing, please make your way and come to Jesus right now. There are so many people outside. Begin to clap for them. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me, I will follow. I have made a choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead me, I will go. Keep on. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me, I will fall. Keep coming. Clear the way for them. Lord, I have made a choice 
to listen for your voice wherever you may lead me i will go i will go i will go wherever you lead me yeah. i will go i will go i will go i will go wherever you lead me yeah. i will go i honestly believe with all my heart that there are still more people outside don't let the space yes scare you they were not just it's not just about crowd it's about the fact that you should not be sitting down when you are supposed to be coming out. If the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and you know that you need Jesus, please leave your seat and come out. It's a call. It's a very serious call. A call that will bring revival in your life. Hallelujah. Those of us who are here, some of us are giving our lives to Christ for the first time. Some of us have given our lives to Christ before, but the, the encumbrances of life have pushed us out of alignment. I want you to know that there is hope for you. This is, this is a family of faith. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Before I pray for you in one minute, can you talk to Jesus by yourself? Truly from your heart. Say, Lord, I've come to you. I'm not ashamed. I'm tired of moving in circles and pretending like I'm finding fulfillment. There is a vacuum in my heart. Lord, I cry that you will lift me. Feel that vacuum. Help. Help. Cry to your maker. Feel that vacuum. Lord, I've filled it with relationships. I've filled it with friends. I've filled it with sin. I've filled it with the flesh. But this night, help them under the anointing, please. This night. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Please talk to Jesus by yourself. We call you our Messiah. Jesus, Son of God, I believe. hallelujah please lift your right hand i salute you for the courage listen i want you to know that jesus is in this place and heaven is rejoicing over your courage it takes courage to stand before god it takes courage to stand before the people of god there are some of you because of your lifestyles people can look at you and say ah this person too don't mind anybody you are standing before your maker it's a decision that will transform your life forever hallelujah say after me very clearly say lord jesus please say it from your heart lord jesus i come to you with all my heart i believe in you i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for my sins i receive eternal life into my spirit i ask you to be my lord and my savior write my name in the lamb's book of life from today let my life change and let it change forever i'm a child of god the power of sin and the flesh is broken over my life forever in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father I break the power of sin and death over your people in the name of Jesus I set you free from everything that will not let you serve God in spirit and truth and I declare that from tonight you are caught away from your old self you are a brand new person washed by the blood of Jesus let the devil not take any railing accusation like Joshua the high priest Satan the Lord rebuke you 
we declare that these men and women they are the righteousness of God in the name of Jesus we take off that filthy garment and we put the garment of the righteousness of God from today you stand blameless before the throne in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching